Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. It's an early morning, gloomy day. Still kind of a beautiful day, though. Just, you know, doing the odd and end things, the things of living life. Nothing too terribly exciting. I thought I'd check in. Maybe we can do a little bit of a vlog today. I have a couple of errands to run, and nothing crazy. Like, I need to run to the store and get some lettuce for the tortoise. Where'd Tucker go? Tucker, where'd you go? Already back to bed. The old man, he comes down, he snuggles with the turtle, and he's like, nah, I'd rather go upstairs and lay down. It's just kind of how old dogs do sometimes. These guys are crazy. They are nuts. You put your hand, I don't know if I can get it in frame. You can put your hand up here. Sometimes they'll jump out and bite your fingers which I'm actually not really in the mood to have happen right now. So just take my word for it. I actually had someone come out this year and clean up the leaves, which was fantastic. They sent like an army of people out here with leaf blowers and it took them like two and a half, three hours. But there's no leaves. The, the one thing about oak trees, held on to leaves and drop them all winter, but we had all that wind, that horrible windstorm a couple weeks ago and it took most leaves out of the oak tree so while there's still some falling it's not that bad not that bad at all so maybe this winter there won't be oak leaves everywhere all winter long that would be really nice it's been about a week and a lot of that water has finally started to evaporate out of this thing i really overwatered this terrarium i've only had to water this like i'd say three or four times period and it's been less than a year and the last time was just recently because I put a new syngonium in there and needed to be watered in. Those bromeliads are from a plant haul that I'll be doing later. Different video. Um, hello? Guys, I swear, I think there's a demon in that faucet. It just started doing that on its own. I haven't even touched it. It wasn't doing that a little while ago. This is just always here because it's what I fill the dog's water up with and then I pour it in there. Would you stop it? What is that about? I swear it hasn't done this since the last vlog. Ugh, creepy. And it stopped. I don't get it. Did you guys see the ugly Christmas sweater planter video? I had a blast doing that. It's ugly and I love it. I've really had a good time seeing other people's videos who were doing it. I think it's really cool seeing other people just sit down and have fun and gluing things to flower pots. Pumpkin, how you do? Don't clean your pumpkin on camera, pumpkin. I know, I interrupted you, I'm sorry. You wanna say hi, pumpkin? Okay, I know you're busy. I'm sorry. Last week, attempted to go to Target. Didn't really work out because they were closed because someone started a fire at Target and then went and robbed the Macy's that's down the street. <laughs> She's loving having all these rugs in here. I'm not. It drives me crazy. I think they're so ugly, but it really makes a big difference for the old dog. He doesn't slide around. You're cute. You look a little bit like an otter pumpkin. So yeah, I'm gonna go by Target. Give that a, another go because they had this like cat tree thing I want to get for pumpkin. And of course, after coffee, that is. And uh, I've had some, oh, the car's gonna make that noise. Listen, she's 13 and she's got that 13 year old attitude. It's starting to kick in with the rumbling. Do you hear that? It's so annoying. It doesn't always do it. That's the problem. So when I've taken it to the vet, not the vet, most of when I took my car to the, when it's gone to the dealership, they're like, no, no, there's nothing. I don't hear anything. I'm like, well, I swear it's make, we've been through this already. And I'm going to, we'll catch up when I'm not sitting in a car that's making tons of noise, which you may or may not be able to hear, but believe me, it's making noise. Hmm. But I did figure out that if I slide it into neutral or park, the noise stops. So that's good. Sometimes when I'm at a drive through I get really annoyed just because it gets so loud and obnoxious. It's, it's more of a winter thing. Anyways, here I am. I'm at Target. They're open, so that's good. They said they're going to be closed for a few weeks, but it was only like a week, if even. So go ahead on in there. There's still a lot of people who you can tell are here for fire cleanup, so it should be interesting to see what it's like in there. It's very bizarre. The store's like not empty, but there's not much on the shelves. It's, I guess... I wonder how they determined what had to go because of the fire. Because the fire was in the bedding department. And I'm still at the front of the store. I'm looking for a bikini trimmer. Pumpkin has a, uh, I keep wanting to say a cloth, that's gross. Pumpkin has a mat. And the vet said to use the, like, ladies bikini razors because they're gentle instead of cutting them off so you don't cut the cat. It's weird, it's like the cosmetic aisles are just done. Oh, they have my lotion. That's good. I like this. It soaks up so fast. That's why I like it. Don't spend a ton of time trying to rub the lotion into your skin. 
again, that sounded weird, absorbs it, yeah, instantly heals dry skin. I would never put this on my face, though. That seems like asking for trouble. It's just supposed to be more gentle, so you don't have to worry about cutting them. Because when you use scissors on a mat on a cat, it's really easy to cut their fur, so this is, there's no way. You hear that? Listen. Could you, this, there's no way. She is not going to tolerate that. I'll give it a try, though. Oh, I'm home. There was Target. There was nothing there. And then everywhere else, I mean, it was just a zoo everywhere it went. So I was like, no, no, not today. I'm coming home. Hi, pumpkin. Hi, honey. You're about to really hate me. I'm so sorry. Well, I'm shocked. No, she was not happy about it, but she let me take it off. I'm going to get you a cookie, pumpkin. You were so good. Yes, you were. Didn't, like, glide through effortlessly, but... It worked. I had to sort of gently maneuver it, but much safer than scissors. I also should have had her treats ready to go immediately. So, you know, for the positive association to be there, it needs to be pretty quick, pretty immediate. Now that like 15 seconds has passed, she probably just thinks she's just getting treats and has nothing to do with the trimmer. Do you think you should get some too? Oh, you're next, Charlie. Okay, well that was all fun. Now let's hang out in here with the plants and have a little talk. Not a conversation I've been wanting to have, but people have been asking. There's a lot of stuff going on in the YouTube world with all of the kappa, and then there's this YouTube walkout going on, so I thought I'd just talk about it briefly with what I know. Go ahead and drop the orchids down, let them have a nice soak, and talk about kappa, the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. Now, I'm not an expert in this. I have talked to a family member who's a lawyer about it. Plant channels shouldn't be at risk, at least not through the FTC. If you, a video is directed at children, then it is at risk. That's just the way things are. That's what the act is there for. And uh, I don't have any issues with this COPPA act. I think that it's necessary. I don't think that people should be data mining children or targeting children for advertising. I think it's a little bit slimy that they've gone directly at YouTube, but they have every right to do that. It's just when you think about all of the different devices that listen in on us, and then you, you know, they're going after YouTube, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. It's an easy target. And this is something that's been going on for a very long time. The COPPA Act isn't new. This is not a new thing. Uh, as long as the videos aren't specifically made for children, you can decide for your channel if they are intended for children or they're not, or you can decide to review each video manually. There are some things that really do stink about it. There are some great channels out there that are for children, and uh, I don't think that their goal is to be manipulating any type of situations or taking advantage of anything. It's uh, a lot of um, animal channels, like Camp Kennan. I don't know if he'll be affected, but... He's got great content, and I wouldn't say he's, like, directing it towards children, but clearly a lot of children watch that channel. So uh, that could be really bad for someone like that, where a lot of their what they're doing and their education and everything is going to be potentially impacted because of that. It's YouTube with their gray area. That's what's really scary. Anybody who was on YouTube during the apocalypse knows what I'm talking about. YouTube is not good about being really clear about their policies and procedures and rules and whatnot. They're really good about making things really gray and vague so that there's kind of leeway for them to sort of get away with whatever they want to. That's what bothers me. And then the way this is supposed to be working is that there's supposed to be two different AIs running, one through YouTube, one through the FTC. So the one through YouTube, if it finds that your videos are made for children, whether you think they are or not, then those videos will no longer be searchable. They won't have a comment section. They'll be demonetized and uh, so forth. It's not a good thing. YouTube, they leave things kind of gray and vague, like I was just saying. So it's very possible that there could be channels out there who are just very family friendly or just educational and they might get hit. That's kind of a scary thing. We don't know yet how bad that's going to be. I do know that there have been some crafting channels and things like that that are already being affected because they had like children's games or something that they were using or various different things. It's just there's so much we have to be careful about now until this all gets sorted out. That's what's going on with YouTube. With the FTC, 
if you get hit and they're like, hey, you made this video for children. You can't do that. Now you owe us, I think it's like forty-two, forty-three thousand dollars $43,000 per violation. That is very scary. I'm not that concerned about it personally for me because I don't, my videos are not intended for children. They're, I mean, mostly family friendly. I don't really curse very much and any adult humor, I try to make sure it's more of an innuendo. And I only do that because it's out of respect to people who are watching my videos. I don't know if you might have a child. Maybe a children's, in, a, a children. Maybe there's a child in the room. I don't know your life and I don't want anything to be offensive, basically. Even though, I mean, that's not me in real life. I have a very dirty mouth and a dirty mind and I just, I'm very unfiltered. But here on YouTube, like I said, I don't know who might be in the room. So I try and make sure that things are family friendly for the most part it's mostly gardening stuff with exceptions to the vlogs which kind of just go whatever direction they go so there's not really much of a reason for things to become offensive in any manner but i think you get what i'm saying it's that fear there's a lot of fear out there right now from a lot of creators that because their channel might be family friendly that they might get hit so with the ftc uh, they have to prove intent so i'm not personally concerned about any of my videos because they would have to be able to prove that I made a video with the intent of it being marketed towards children, directed towards children, which I don't, I don't do. There's no reason to. I mean, hello children, you're welcome here, but my intended audience is adults, teenagers, grown-ups, not kids. So it's going to be kind of a waiting game. Uh, all this goes into effect the 10th and forward, which is tomorrow, the day after this video comes out. And, uh, you know, like I said, nobody really knows what's going to happen, and that's just because these gray areas and things being so vague with YouTube. I'm not saying I'm not a little bit nervous. I have a lot of tags in my videos that go family, learning, and educational. I've stopped using them since all this COPPA stuff came about, but uh, that could be potentially a problem. I don't know. It shouldn't be, but with YouTube, it might be. These are... Really sad. Look at how sad this monster is. That's from a plant haul video that hasn't come out yet. I'm still in communication with the person I placed that I ordered that from. It's going to be a difficult haul to film. Not looking forward to that one. And uh, there might even be some benefits to this. There are some channels out there that like have really been milking things, making a lot of money off these videos being appealing to children. Like, I mean, grown men, people in their lower 20s just screaming and acting a fool in front of the camera because they know children like that stuff. I don't, grown people, like, I don't think anybody who's even 15 or 16 years old is watching that garbage. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. Though it will be interesting to see what happens because this might kind of clear out some of the clutter on YouTube where people are just, like I said, milking the system and making just ridiculous. We'll be able to find out who's here for the money and who's here for the fun. There's nothing wrong with being on here for money. I don't care what you, you do. Do what you got to do to get your coin. I don't care. As far as those types of channels I was just talking about to see if they would still keep uploading because, you know, they love their fans so much. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I'd be surprised, but you never know. It's, of course, a broad statement. Like I said, I don't think gardening channels, for the most part, should have anything to worry about, but at least not with the FTC. With YouTube, it, things could be kind of rough for a while. I, I wouldn't be shocked one bit if the AI is going through things that are just family friendly and being like, oh, hey, this was made for kids. Go on. I don't equate the two, and I don't think most people do. You know, I think of something that's made for children being videos that, like, feature children's toys and games, and like I said, maybe you know, grown-ass men screaming at cameras, acting ridiculous because little boys think it's funny, things like that. <laughs> Many of those channels, by the way, are ones that YouTube used to highly, highly, highly push and recommend. Put them up on the trending page because they made a lot of money off of them. Can't help but wonder what those channel statistics were like, though. Like, what was their average age demographic? Like I said, I doubt it was many people over 18. Probably not. So yes, it is, like I said, a little bit scary just because there's so much unknown with YouTube. But again, I really don't think it's going to be an issue for gardening channels. Like I said, at least in regard to the FTC, I got, I'm stuck. Let go, let go. Here we go. Uh, but YouTube could be a different story. I need to grab some stakes for this and build it more of like a triangle sort of trellis because this is it's starting to go and take off and do its thing, which is great. I've never brought up. We'll get to that later. Okay, and now the YouTube walkout. I don't know a ton about that. I've just heard about it today. It's about their new terms of service, which I've 
people saying that basically they can just delete channels because they're no longer commercially viable and then that's being turned into oh youtube is saying that if they don't make money off of the channel they can delete it i don't know. i looked at this tweet from youtube still very vague and uh, not super clear but it sounds a little bit more to me like what they're saying is that basically if a channel's like been inactive for a really long time and nobody's watching those videos anymore they can get rid of those channels and like declutter essentially but I don't know. Again, YouTube, they're just so vague about things. It always leaves people going, well, we don't know what's going on. And it makes people scared. After that adpocalypse, that was a rough time on YouTube. So many of my videos got hit as being um, inappropriate. And they weren't. There was nothing wrong with them. It was just that AI that they have just took forever to get its act together and figure out what was and wasn't appropriate content. So with the kappa there's gonna be some good and some bad going on with that it's i i'm mainly concerned that there's going to be some great educational channels out there that are going to be affected by this just because a lot of their audience is children a lot of fish and animal and pet channels and things like that and diyers and whatnot where their intent obviously isn't malicious but maybe the majority of their viewers are kids and that that, that just sucks for them that's all because youtube just can't be clear about things and it would make things so much better if they could just say hey this is what you can and this is what you can't do they sort of do that they gave like a few bullet points of things but it still just leaves people wondering and i think it would really suck that if somebody has a channel say about like fish keeping and uh, all their videos are about taking care of fish, what, you know, what to do for different types of fish. And a lot of kids watch those videos, but they aren't necessarily made for children. Children may watch these videos because they like plants. That doesn't mean it was made for them, but YouTube's AI may not see it that way. Oh, and then back to the walkout thing. There's a lot to it that I'm still trying to sort out. It goes from the 10th to the 13th, and I think the 13th through 16th in the UK, right? Because there's like an election or something going on over there. So basically, people are just asking, don't upload on these days and don't go on the platform on these days. I need to know more. I've never been someone who just, like, blindly follows anything. I like a lot of facts and minimal opinion when making up my decision about something. Um, but I, I probably wasn't going to upload on those days anyway, so it's not a big deal for me. And uh, I support it if it's for a good cause. And the whole point is that YouTube isn't protecting and respecting the, their creators that's something i can get behind because that's very much true has been true for a very long time especially like when it comes to uh, blocking people on youtube you know you can hide someone from your channel so basically it's an option hide users comments from channels they, those people can still watch your videos they're not blocked they can still watch you just won't see their comments which is nice i guess to not have to worry about you know the nastiness and whatnot but otherwise to actually like remove someone you have to report them and it's not the most easy thing to do and i know for some of us myself i have had a situation actually a couple of times but one specifically where i was like no like there's someone i need to block like they need to not see my content because they have an unhealthy obsession and uh, there's like a level of delusion going on with this person and it's making me feel unsafe personally, which is why I no longer show the front of my house and things like that. And I, that's, that's happened to plenty of people on here. It's not a unique situation at all. And uh, there's not much you can do about it through YouTube. You can hide them. Uh, reporting them can be seen as something that isn't the best thing to do when it comes to stalker situations. Like, you're supposed to really just not address it, which I've just done, but, oh, you know, well, screw it. I'm trying to get a point across here, so I think it's worth it. I will never go more in-depth into detail on that situation than I just have, but it's little things like that where I've been like, you know, I get it, YouTube. You want to make your money, and so blocking someone isn't a great idea. That option isn't something that they have on here because they won't make money. If people are being blocked and can't watch the videos, they're not making money. So they just hide them. So I can... <laughs> that is kind of a funny thing, though. So you, anybody who has been 
blocked, really just hidden from the channel, they still get the money from those views. I just never see their comments, which I think is actually kind of funny on YouTube's behalf that they set things up that way. But at the same time, there is a lot out there when it comes to just respecting the creators that I get where people are coming from. In a nutshell, the walkout is a situation where I would like to learn a little bit more about that before voicing any kinds of opinions. I probably wasn't going to upload those days anyway, so if it seems like I'm taking a stance, maybe I am, maybe I'm not, I don't know yet. But I also, from a business perspective, can kind of understand where YouTube comes from with certain things. The, a lot of big corps, I'm not saying it's okay, I think it's absolutely ridiculous how a lot of big corporations run, but I'm sure their perspective on it is, well, if you don't want to do these things, that's fine, don't. We provide the service, you don't have to be here, go somewhere else. Wouldn't shock me one bit if that's their mentality. Oftentimes, that's what it feels like their mentality is anyways. Gonna be an interesting, uh, hopefully just few weeks, but might be a couple of years, we'll see. On another note, I got a humidifier, see? And I've learned that I have a lot of minerals in my water, so I've switched over to only using filtered RO water in here. I have a reverse osmosis filter, so that's not a big deal. I won't have to clean it as much anyway so that's good because if you have a lot of minerals in your water you get this white dust on things which i didn't know until i got this i've had humidifiers before just kind of cheap ones and they didn't do that but maybe i was using my reverse osmosis water in those ones too i don't remember anyways that's a simple solution it works okay i know the lavoite is the most popular one i didn't feel like waiting on shipping it was just so dry in here i couldn't take it my skin was dry and itchy. It's just anytime that garage door opens, it just gets horrible in here. But I did finish wrapping the plastic, which I'll talk about more in this upcoming vlog for the weekend, the vlog that'll be out after this one or a couple videos from now. And that's going to help hold in a lot of that humidity. So that won't be as much of an issue anymore. The subjects in this video, I know are all over the place. It's just kind of a last minute, hi, let's talk and get this COPPA conversation out of the way because it's been lingering for a while people have been asking about things for a while i did look at my um it's look at how that it's doing its thing really taking off and going another direction i think that that's going to need a larger support i'll say i like this humidifier it's nice it's top fill it doesn't have like warm cool mist or anything it's just cool mist that's all but i like it it's 1.6 liters and puts out a good amount of humidity i think for this space if I were trying to like solely roll in humidifiers to keep my humidity up around like 65, 75, which is pretty high, I'd probably need like three of these things, which would be like $300. In which case I would just get a greenhouse fogger. That would make a lot more sense than having three humidifiers around to maintain because you got to clean them and it's just, it's a pain. I don't want to have to do that. I don't mind having one, like that's good just for supplemental purposes there's enough going on out of here i don't need anything else to take care of that's fun like i was saying with this mandevilla it's really starting to take off now that things are warming up and the moisture's kicking in it just kind of sat here for a couple weeks and now it's finally starting to do its thing so i need to get some larger bamboo supports to put in here i have some foliage some dead foliage i need to clean out of things like this cordolin back here remember i like ripped that out of the planter and threw it in here one of those stems didn't take, but the rest of them seem okay. And I think the one that didn't take might be able to cut that back and it might get going again. I'm hoping. If not, it's a, I have plenty of them. It'll be okay. Also waiting on a new leaf to open up over here on my Okinawa Silver Alakaja Odora. I'm really excited for this one. This looks like it might be a really cool one. I need to not touch it. I need to leave it alone. It's been pushing up for a few days. I can't wait to see what that looks like. Oh, and there's a teeny tiny itty bitty little bud. A couple of them actually. There's another one up here and some more up there. Little buds on the poblano. That's exciting. I'm very curious to see how that's going to do. So they usually need a little bit of heat to kind of do their thing during the winter. But it's pretty warm in here and it's under light so we will see oh and the persian shields remember that one i cut that back in a vlog i don't know it was back late summer when i was prepping things to bring inside and i was like i'm not gonna take it in. And i was like fine i'll take one in i cut everything off cut it back potted it up and it was just wood but it's starting to well it has been flushing out for i'd say a week or so and it seems to be doing well Things aren't too stretched or anything yet, but it's still early. We'll have to wait and see how that does. I don't anticipate it being a particularly difficult plant to keep, at least not in this grow space because it's pretty warm and humid in here. 
in the house, I don't know. I've never tried them just like in normal household conditions before. Okay, that's enough. We've gone on long enough. There have been some plant updates. Got that COPPA conversation out of the way. Oh, and I did a thing and it's over here. We'll talk about that in a different video. <laughs> you can kind of see it from over here, peeking through the Eureka palms. Look at that. Oh, it's such a pretty plant. Anyways, I hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for hanging out for whatever the heck this was. We're just hanging out, talking, doing some plant stuff, soaking orchids to Target for a very brief moment. And I got some things done and I'm glad to have had the talk about the COPPA situation. And feel, comment down below. What do you know about it? Um, anything else anybody has to add, greatly appreciated. The more informed everybody is, the better, especially with the walkout. I'll be looking more into that. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And don't forget to do all the YouTube stuff. Give the video a thumbs up. Makes a big difference for the channel. I appreciate it. Subscribe as well and hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. I think I overwatered my skin dip sauce. Uh oh, I'm sorry, honey. It should be okay. They tend to throw a bit of a fit if they stay wet for too long though, so hopefully I didn't kill it. That's something I should repot to something that dries a little bit better. Um, I will be active on Instagram the next few days if I'm not here on YouTube, so you can follow me there. My social media is linked down below, so that's a good place to find me if I'm not here around on YouTube. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye!